Even, even starting with the products, I was a major, major skeptic at, at that. I enrolled with one canister, a shake, and a bottle of Ionics. So, um, it's a tough one. It's a yeah, tough one. I was the person who was. <laughs> Don't tell me about auto ship. I don't want, I don't care about getting my products paid for, blah, blah, blah. Like I was that really, really annoying person that we all love having. Um, but I, I dabbled with the products for a couple months and then I finally decided to give this cleanse thing a try. And after a couple of weeks, I honestly felt like a different person. So I'm sure for, for many of you, most of you probably came in for their products. That's exactly how I started. I still wanted nothing to do with the business. And then after, after a few months of making money every single Monday, cause I, I felt so good. I was sharing it with family and friends and I made money for a few months, anywhere between four to 600 bucks. Um, I was stoked about that. I was getting my products paid for plus making some, some extra, but finally decided to take a closer look because I was like, hey, I'm making money and I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, we're, we weren't even making that much money when we decided to take a look. So, so anyway, so we decided to, to attend a corporate event. And from that time, we never looked back. It was that point that we made a decision to do this. Our first corporate event was a university in action um, exactly four years ago, last April. And we just started figuring it out and we were you know it took me two and a half years of us building together um like kind of in the nooks and crannies we we never did more than five to ten hours a week when we first started um we were enrolled by someone who is not even active anymore we were placed on you know on an inside leg it's like blah 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 i used to think it was so important where you're placed but now i'm like it doesn't freaking matter where you're placed if you want to do this you just do it <laughs> but so we didn't really have that any kind of support in the first year because we really had to start asking and figuring out like so who do we ask for help and then you know finding out that we're part of Steven's team and Lisa's team and then Michael's team it's like wow we hit the jackpot man <laughs> we really did kind of fumble through it we didn't have previous experience and we probably made every mistake there is in the books to make but we we honestly just got started with a mindset of I'm going to figure this out no matter what and I still to this day that's what I coach my team on when they first start I'm like if you just decide right now that's the only thing you do is make a freaking decision that you're going to figure this out no matter what then you're already there just decide that and then the rest we just kind of figured out along the way so um but yeah I, I, i've been doing this full time now for a year and a half and then i figured out how to work with this together and it's been the most incredible journey like it's anyone who's doing this you, you know the, the relationships are, are the best part the people we've met the person you grow into that you have to grow into in order to do this and it's still a constant i don't want to say it's a daily struggle but we still have there's hurdles, yeah, there's hurdles and roadblocks still every single day. And I, I don't think, I don't know if they ever go away. I think we just get better at dealing with them. So, Yeah, that's great. I, I love like a few things that you kind of touched on that is great for everyone to know is um, kind of like we always say, like the master was once a disaster. So as long as you're doing something and you're going to reach out to some people, you know, someone's going to connect with you, even with the little mistakes you say that you make along the way. And I love that you said um, you guys went to University in Action. It's like when you went to that, when you went to an event, you made the decision. And we, we really try and, and get that through to the team, how the events are just so important, so important. And, and I love how that really helped you guys make that decision. Um, and then we, and to know that it doesn't matter where you're placed in your tree. It's really up to us, right? It's, it's up to us. And, you know, you could have, a great spot in the tree, quote unquote, and have all this volume in one leg. But if you're not in consistent action and, and going left, right, left, right, and, and taking that one other leg and building it, it doesn't matter where you are. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to really get more in step, like how do you two feel that, what did you do to grow into a six figure a year business? Like what, what do you say is really how you grew it? Um, I think at the beginning, I mean, we were just a team of one, like everyone is when they start, right? Well, 
I guess it depends how you come in, right? But we definitely didn't have any support. So when we started, it was just us and we got to events. And when we made that decision, we just, I mean, for a full year, we were, you know, we were just us. It was just us trying to find those people to kind of link arms with. And then when we finally did get people to link arms with us, we would always, I mean, we came in and we went to an event and that was our decision point. And then we would just get people to events. It was like, Tress is like, I mean, that Nazi. Event Nazi. It's like everyone will say. <laughs> and I, but I warn people like right, like straight out of the gate. Like as soon as it, someone says they, they want to do this and we, you know, we, we talk about, you know, what kind of income they want to create for themselves and, you know, and this is just how I do it. So if they tell me they want to make anywhere between 500 and a thousand bucks a month and I'm like, you know, you, you, there's a lot of online training and some local events and you can plug into the team calls and that's a super achievable amount of money to earn but you probably don't have to come to the events, you know, come if you want to, but if you tell me anything more than, you know, like a thousand to 2000, 3000 a month, then that's beginning to be some sort of a significant income. Then the events are non-negotiable. This is just, this is what you do. It's not, Hey, when you feel like it or when you can afford it, come to an event. I, I tell people straight out of the gate, just, so you know, I'm going to be in your kitchen and take you to an event. And once you come, then you won't need to hear from me anymore because you'll just get it. Right. I, have, I won't entertain a conversation about wanting to do this business if you are not coming to the events because that's just what we did. We went to all four core events and we always have every single year since we've been doing this. And we will continue to do so because that's, that's how you grow. You continue to you build your belief. You plug into the energy. You get that support from the community. Like... You know, there's advantages to, to working on your own and being your own boss and, you know, working from your house. But then there's the disadvantages. You're by yourself all the time. You have to find ways to stay self-motivated. And, and getting to the events is a huge one. Yeah. So, and then the other thing we did is uh, the people that we had in our local area, we always would do, um, as the team started to grow, we'd do this little thing called sizzle sessions. And we would just invite people over on a Thursday night we'd bring out some wine and we would basically just have the zero agenda. We would just have some wine, have some conversation. Then by the time everyone left, it was two hours later, everyone was fired up and ready to go with the new information that everyone had. And that kind of translated into, you know, the team growing, we'd have super Saturdays and then we'd have, we'd have parties here after the, after the events. And we just created this mini culture within our team that, it's just really special when you have that like when you have those groups of people who are just they're like the second family and everyone gets it they're all on the same page and you all have fun together and that's kind of what really kept everyone together early on and it's something that um definitely catapulted and really shifted our business was when i started getting really 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 good at asking questions that nobody else was asking um, the hard stuff and I've learned that from none other than Lisa DeMeo. Always be curious, be the master question asker. And there was a point in time where it, when I thought I was going to be able to retire mm -hmm. from my dental hygiene career sooner. And I was like, I was really checking out at work and like not wanting to be there and kind of getting creepy pants. And then I just shifted my perception. Like, you know what? I'm going to use this opportunity because I wasn't allowed. My dentist didn't allow me to speak of isogenics at my work. I probably actually would have stayed longer if I was allowed to speak about it. But <laughs> so, but I had patients in my chair. I was at this office for five years. I had good relationships with people. So I just decided I was going to use this opportunity to get really good at asking questions. And just find it's so easy in a dental office just to have your very basic conversation. How's the weather? Oh, traffic. Oh, what's going on this week? You know, like a very surface conversation all the time. And that's just what we did. And then I started getting good at going deeper and finding out more about people and finding out how I, it was like my mission to connect with every single person that came into my, into my, into my office. And so by the time I started getting good at that and then, you know, filling that over into how we build our business, I just started asking people, I guess, meaningful questions. I, even if it didn't turn into something that time, I, my goal is to always have somebody leave our conversation with the wheel spinning. You know, just like, I, was, I guess they're nosy questions and maybe that's why people don't ask them so much, but that's when I started to notice things really shift up. 
Yeah, I love that because I know um, it, it took me a while to, to feel comfortable asking questions, especially like uh, where we are in Jersey, like people t will be like, what are you asking me for? Are you playing a thousand questions? Like, you know, you come off as like being the nosy Nelly and somebody will tell you off, but there's a way to do it. And, you know, you just find, it helps you find that common ground with people. And yeah, and you get to know what's missing in their life or what their, their goals are that this can fit into. So I really love that. Um, now, what does your... For you to like, what does your daily day look like in terms of like your actions that you would take or like, what are like the core things you say that you do in your daily activity for your business? The, well, the fundamentals are, they're the same, right? Like we have to find people to talk to, talk to people we find like that. That's the same across the board. Um, what we've done in the past, we've done, we, we used to do a lot of tasting parties. We don't do them as much anymore. We'll still do them once in a while. Um, we have the first four years of our business, we really, really did build through our warm market and through Facebook. And so now we are starting to reach a point where we're like, okay, we want to take it to next level. We need to be able to branch out. And so we're starting to learn how to just connect with more people online and how to gain more of a presence there as well. Um, yeah, well, I mean, like I said, you know, our, our warm market kind of, that got us to where we were. Tres was working in the dental office. And, you know, to be quite tra transparent, I mean, this group of people got us to our four-star level and it's a great group of people, but we know now that we're at a position now where we really need to grow ourselves in a whole new direction in order mm -hmm. to, you know, get to the next level. Because now we're talking to complete strangers. We're talking to people online. Like, it's, it's completely shifted. I'm very comfortable talking to people out there in the world. I can strike up a conversation you know, quite easily with anybody. With anybody. <laughs> but um, yeah, like we're, we're shifting now. Right now is a really interesting point for our business right now because we are having to really spread our wings and find some new people and then a whole new team, really. We got to build a whole new team. Right? Yeah, you know, we were just, we had a super Saturday uh, this past Saturday and PK Smith came and spoke. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen him, but he been to a few times. Oh, yeah. So he spoke about kind of what you're saying, like, you know, there's that two star hump where you, you, you've done certain activities and now you have to shift your gears. And then he spoke of the four star where now you have to start doing something different, too. Like you said, you have that team and then you got to shift your your activities and, and do something different. So that's like exactly what he was saying on on Saturday. Yeah. And I just wanted to add another mm -hmm. thing, and that's totally right. And it's, if you ever get a chance to see PK, he's, he's amazing. He's a great speaker to listen to. But I mean, people always ask this question, you know, what does your day look like? It's like, let's, let's be real here. I mean, the days are clunky sometimes. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, they feel like we are still honestly figuring the whole thing out. I feel like we're, we're just starting to figure this out, but we still have days where we're just like, like, oh, you know, it's, we have so many people on our team who are always asking like, it seems like everybody's looking for like a secret or a shortcut and we certainly don't have it and don't know if there is one or if it's possible but the things right now that I want to focus on the most really are um, getting my meditation dialed in getting my visualization and my mindset dialed in because I know I know what I've had to do to get to this point and then we got here and it's it's a really comfortable place to be. Like I've never ever earned over six figures before. So it was kind of like things were crazy for a while and we had this massive explosion in our team. And then we definitely went into management, management mode with our team. And now we're like, but if, when you go into management mode, you kind of, you, you creep up. Like we always see the little, little tiny bits of increase, but still we're like, okay, now we're ready to go to next level. So what does that look like? And it's just always, you know, being, being a giant sponge and learning from everybody around you, finding somebody who has what you have and following their lead. That's great. Yeah. Um, the one thing I've always known you guys for is um, just the fact that, and you, you mentioned it already, but I love how, I've always learned that you guys kind of made everything casual in terms of like, 
it wasn't a quote unquote launch party. It was just like you said, you, you know, you did that culture with your team where it was very casual and you just got together with, with some food and wine and chatted. But I just, you really, you two were really kind of known for like the casual launch party too. And I just really love that because I think a lot of times people overthink it mm-hmm. and, and realize it's just about the connections, not about sitting there with the products and like pointing at it and giving the science. So um, if you could just mention a little bit about that further too. No, for sure. Um, so, and everything I'm saying, I, I don't want to be, I'm not dissing the, the launch party format. Like if that's working for you, that, I think it's also very different depending on your culture and where you live and how people are. So the way we've always done it is it's basically like we have a giant island in our kitchen and we invite a bunch of people over. There's always wine at our parties because we because we drink wine. And <laughs> we, have, we have, when we first started, we really did follow the system of the launch party format. And it, it never, ever felt right. But we are trying to do it because we're like, we're going to follow the system. And we're going to do what the leaders are telling us to do. And, you know, so we did follow it for a while. And it just never felt right. And finally, we basically just said, screw it. We're doing it our way and we don't even show a video sometimes like <laughs> well we stopped do showing videos a while ago already because i don't know it's like sometimes sometimes we would if we if we set it up properly but for the most part even when we have our team meetings or we have like a you know a business party um it's the same thing with everyone standing around the island we start sharing if, if it's business oriented we only talk about money and that's it and we start talking about if you do nothing, if nothing in your life changes right now, where are you five years from now? What else do you have going on to create the extra income? What security do you have in your life? What would you like to do more? Like we start ha- doing, hashing out all those questions that David Wood really dives into a lot at the University in Actions. And if we do a product party, we don't talk about money either because it doesn't make sense to me if someone is coming to me because they have a health issue and they want to lose 20, 25 pounds. Why would I start talking to them about making money? I like, guess it doesn't make sense. So, and like I said, I know that's not following the system or what, what, you know, what the launch party format is, but when we have a tasting party, everyone comes over, same thing where everyone's drinking wine. And we've got it. We sample all, all, well, all the five pillars yeah. pretty much. I guess obviously not, not the vitamins, vitamins. but I, I do make shakes in my parties. I know that's another thing that people are like hitting this on, but I make them because the people want to taste them. And sometimes we'll do like an, an energy performance party and it's just all the amped products. And then sometimes we'll do like just the shakes and some of my favorites. I'll do a couple of the bars and, and you, you know, just, the hydrate. Yeah. But all I do is we stand around, I, I rattle off the five pillars. I share my testimonial quick. I'm like, hey, Roxy, do you have, share your story. Like, I just ask a couple of people like, hey, why don't you share your story? And hey, why don't you share your story? And sometimes we'll share a story of someone not even in the room and we take a bunch of stuff. And then I have enrollment forms. I'm like, hey, if anyone wants to get started, here's the forms. And they're really walking into the community of this whole thing too, right? No matter if it's business or product or whatever, they're all coming and they're all kind of getting immersed in the in the mini culture that we've created there. And it's you know it's indicative of of the bigger culture that Icegenics has to offer too. So that's what I love about it, is that the community piece is a big big thing. Even just about- our uh, one sec. Our umbrella just blew over. <laughs> But yeah, I know we just, we keep it fun and casual and um, I don't know, it's, it's always, it's always worked for us. And it's, it's, it's not always the, well, we hear it all the time. It's not the products that sell. It's especially for the business when people come over and they meet us and they're like, oh, you guys are real. You guys are normal. And we're, you know, we just, we're just being us and we're not going through a presentation and we're not, you know, like. I don't feel like we necessarily need to do that in our house. Right. We're having people, we're inviting them in to why it's awesome to link arms with us. Right, exactly. And it's, it's, I feel like sometimes we just try and overcomplicate. Like, we want to know what are the exact questions you ask? What, um, you know, 
what is it exactly that you do at these events? And if you kind of have to go with what feels right for the situation and for the person. So I want to be mindful of time. So I just want to open up and kind of do an open mic. If anyone has any questions, you can unmute yourself and, and ask. Hi, uh, I have a question. Hi, Colleen. Hi. Uh, Tressley, what kind of questions did you ask? What kind of deeper questions did you ask your clients or or anybody. I know you couldn't talk there at the dentist office, but um. yeah. So when I started having conversations with, um, like I'll use some of my friends for example, who ended up joining because of these conversations. Um, they would happen like there was no, in, I was I didn't have the intention of going there, but the conversation would lead there through. I think I think I wait for you know something, some talk about oh I wish I could do more of this or I wish I could do more of that. And then I just say, I'm like, can, and I always ask for permission. If I, and if I want to take it there directly, I ask for permission. Again, I learned that from Lisa. And I feel like as soon as I ask for permission and they say yes all the time, nobody has ever said no. If I say, them, can I ask you something personal? I just want to, can I just like talk straight up with you? Like, I just say that. And then they're like, oh, Cause they're so curious. They want to know what I'm going to say. Like nobody ever says no. And I'm yeah. like, tell me right now, like how much do you love your job? What would you, what would you rather be doing right now? How much, how much money comes into your house if you lose your job tomorrow? What's mm. your plan? Would you, when do you plan on retiring from your job? Like my, my one good friend, she's a nurse and her retirement plan is in 15 years. I'm like, dude, what if you could ret retire in five years? Like wouldn't you want mm. to, would, would you take a look at something different? I've got friends who, oh, I wish I could move here, but there's no jobs. Okay. Well, why, why do you want to live there? What, what excites you about moving here and why do you not move here? And what if you could create something, you know, what if you could do something different that would allow you to move wherever you want to? You don't have to move, you don't have to live somewhere because of your job. Would, it, would you be open to taking a look at something? I, I ask questions like that. Like I kind of find out what's your plan B? Do you have one right now? Cause most people don't. That's, that's, that's what I have found through, through no, nobody wants to talk about money, you know, like, and I just yeah. say, how much money do you need to make? right now so that you can walk away from your job because a lot of people hate their jobs why are you mm. saying your job that you hate why would you do that to yourself you know there's a different way what would you rather be doing you wake up tomorrow you don't have to go to your job what do you want to do like i i just i pry at, at all of those things and because i ask for their permission first i feel like that's like the disarmor <laughs> Yeah, and then, and then, then maybe it's full out. then maybe after their words are like, "Whoa, I didn't think she was going to go there," but <laughs> like, hey, well, so so that so that's really like a money talk. That's income it, talk. It's almost always about money talk when it comes mm -hmm. to like for for product stuff. Like that, I don't know. To me, that's totally different. If someone okay. is talking about changing their health goals, then and if they, if they're on the fence about starting the products, then I just say, okay. Tell me, I have them go through all the things that they want to change with their health. Mm -hmm. And then I get them to list it all off. And I'm like, okay, so what have you, what have you tried in the past? How has that worked for you? Mm -hmm. On a scale of one to 10, how serious are you to making right. these health changes happen? Like I go through all those questions. Mm -hmm. And then for, for the people who say they can't afford it, then I ask, then I, again, I go back to the, their, their health goals. And I just say, okay, well, if, if you knew that you were going to achieve all of these things three months from now, and you're going to feel like you've never felt before, what, what price would you pay for that? Have you ever thought of your health as, um, as an investment or, or have you ever thought of nu nutrition as an investment in your health? Because in my opinion, it's disease prevention. Mm. So sometimes Great. I ask for their permission to like, can I, can I just ask you something that will shift your perception just for a moment, just like entertain me for 30 seconds, just shift your perception <laughs> on how you're looking at these products. So I hear you talking about the cost of the product, but what if, what if you looked at it as an investment in your health? What is your health worth to you? Mm. Awesome. They usually, usually kind of hit them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So you can see that when I get people, I just put them on the phone with her. <laughs> I'm like, oh, are you interested? Yeah, just a second. <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> a good team. Yep. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have a question? Hi, this is Lola in New Jersey. 
And I do have a question. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, do you or how do you plan to le leverage our new opening in the UK? Do you go international or have you been mostly focusing uh, Canada, US, any, how would you do that? As of now, we have been making connect, like we personally don't know anybody in the UK. We know so a few it, people. Yeah. But it, ha it hasn't been our focus. So we have focus on where our markets are and asking for referrals. But okay. yeah, no, we, yeah. We've, we've just connected with the people that we do know there and have been asking oh, nice. for referrals that we haven't, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? I think we have time for one more question. Let me check the chat too as well. I remember Michael Klaus saying too about, mm -hmm. you know, whenever, when the UK was opening up and so many people were just over the moon excited about it. And it's been great, like it's been, it's super fun watching it explode over there. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to see what happens for all the people who have tea in there. And seeing Lisa go from 12 to 13 star in a week is like freaking awesome. But I remember hearing Michael Klaus talk about, you know, the excitement around the UK. And like, for some people, if you know, if you know people over there, then it's amazing. But if you don't, don't worry about it. Because the reality is, if we walked, if we actually walked around our, our neighborhood, neighborhood yeah. or at the mall, like there's only 550,000 people worldwide. So I'm, there's so many people everywhere, everywhere, across all of Canada, across all of the US, all, all the markets, there are people everywhere. Absolutely. And then you don't know who locally you may enroll and they may know people elsewhere. You know, yeah. it, it's, you just, you may not know someone right now. Yeah, yeah. No. Uh, exactly. Totally. Yeah, that's great. That's a great point to make because like just, a couple of months back, we had someone move in the neighborhood two doors down and they're from England. So I've been building a relationship with them. I've been taking her son to school in the mornings, you know, and just get, we're getting to make a nice friendship. So you never know. I could always ask her for referrals, but you have to build those connections. And yet yeah, you have to always focus what works for you and where you are. So that's great. Um, let's see if we have anything else. Um, I think someone had asked, you know, how do you know, who to invite for business and and who to invite for product but i think you had said like when you have people around your kitchen table for business it's usually the team correct and then or do you have just something around your it would be home for business related we would just if we're having a business meeting we would just send that out as a business meeting and then we would invite people who you know who are interested and or our team and same thing with the uh <laughs> With the uh, product as well. Like it would just be set up as a product thing. People know about it. And that's kind of easy. I have a question. Someone asking for a referral. So that's something I don't think we did once for like the first two years. And it, it's still that we're still, it's becoming more regular, but it's still a skill that we're working on. Um, becoming like the automatic. But I just ask straight up, like if somebody says, oh, no, I don't really think this is for me, I say, no worries at all. Like I, I have no interest in trying to convince anybody of anything at all. I really don't. So I'm like, yeah, cool, no worries. If you ever happen to be in conversation with somebody who's talking about um, improving their health in any way or is looking for maybe another job or a career change or some sort of um, income opportunity, please think of me. Your referral would mean a lot. That's all I say. Yeah. I just want to add one more thing to when I think about the success of our business, I think early on, we were very upfront with people like we told them exactly what was going to happen on the products and in their business. And we did not sugarcoat it. We, we gave them the good, the bad and the ugly of the whole deal. So that when and we all know those things happen, you're gonna get to know from your Uncle Jim and you're gonna your mom's gonna hate you and this whole stuff, right? So we set them up for that. We paint that photo so that when it happens, they're set up for it. And I think we can be a lot more leaders because of that. Yeah. You, have to get, you have to get really good at painting the vision of how incredible and life-changing this is. But doing that, you have to equally put that same energy into how, so, you know, some people don't like the word hard, but how hard it is. Because it is. And I, I just, I'm so straight up with people. I'm like, trust me, you're going to want to quit so many times in your first year. That's why you just have to decide right now that you're in this. Are you sticking to it out? Like, just decide. 
And like, I see people come in all the time. Oh, this is, this is amazing. And I'm interested in this. Oh, this sounds nice. I'm like, those people, they can. Yeah. Like, yeah. People quit all the time and we see it all the time. Yeah. And here are the things that are going to make you want to quit. And then I go through the gigantic list. And those things are never going to go away. You're just going to get better at handling them. So, yeah, we, having that conversation and really setting people up for, you know, the shit under the six feet is very very beneficial i think a lot of times we we get too excited talking about how amazing it is you know that was nothing and we're free and we make all this money and it's like oh and by the way <laughs> here's all the city yeah <laughs> i love that that is so true because you know you you, you see everybody and their success and and you know like we hear so much everyone sees the glory but they don't know the story so to kind of set that up ahead of time so when it does happen they don't think it's just them that's having a hard time and you could just remind them of it it's yeah. crucial in my opinion it's crucial it is because the, the comparison will it can so take you out of the game it really really can and i it's still something it's one of those things that i I don't, I don't want to say I struggle with it, but it's always there. I'm always being challenged by it, by myself, with the comparison thing. And I'll be here with you guys. Um, like, we've been building now for, you know, just over just over four years. We, when I hear people complain about being a sponsor monster, I'm like, oh, my God, I wish I was a freaking sponsor monster. Because we are not. We have only enrolled 144 people in our four years. And so when you average that out, that's whatever like people per year right so those, those aren't incredibly high enrollments and then i was at a university in action um in vancouver just a couple weeks ago and david wood did this incredible incredible piece with all of the different there are so many millionaires in that room and so with all of them he, he broke down their numbers of how many years they've been in how many conversations they've had how many people they've personally sponsored how many of those people are still in the business and actually working in building and then we talked a bit about their financial stuff too or their income and their biggest months of dating stuff but it was pretty incredible to see some of those numbers and if you guys have heard of warren Lance, he's one of the um, top income earners in the company. He's been with for over 12 years. And the number of his enrollments, I was so shocked and blown away. And it was only, I think it was like on 360 or 360. And I was like, I was like, oh my God. And the first thought was like, he's only enrolled that many people, but yet he's making like $2 million a year. And so, and sometimes you, you hear so many different stories. Like some people enroll five or 600, some people enroll 200. But the, enroll, the enrollments, that, that's always where my comparison has been. It's, I'm always so hard on myself because I, I hear of, you know, the people who have enrolled so many and I, I know I want my enrollments to be higher. I really do. And that's, that's my my biggest struggle that I'm always working on. However, at the same time, you can still, I've seen a lot of people in that room who are, their enrollments are at the average between 30 and 40 per year. And I'm like, okay, same as us, you know, so kind of felt good, but they've been in the company for 10 years and they're earning like 40 to $50,000 a week. Right. So don't, don't let yourself get distracted or thrown off by comparison because at the end of the day, their success is there for everybody. And I don't know what, what everyone does for jobs, but when I compared it to dental hygiene, I was like, I don't care how many years it takes me to become a company millionaire. As a dental hygienist, it would have taken me like over 20 years to earn, to cumulatively earn a million dollars. And I made really good money as a hygienist. I made $60 an hour. And when I walked away from that job and I didn't ruin my life things and everybody was like oh my god you're crazy you need so much money as a hygienist i'm like um hey, academic. way better <laughs> wow that's just amazing I, that point you just made it, it's like just being realistic with everybody but also just knowing that you, you can't compare yourself and it, it really is is true and you guys Oh my God, you guys just gave us so many amazing nuggets and so giving and so open. I really want to thank you guys for, for being on the call. 
you were just amazing. And, and I know you really helped everyone here. You guys are great. And I love cheering you guys on when you were on, when you went off the stage uh, in university, when you were here in Jersey. So it was great to see you guys. <laughs> Um, but are you guys planning on coming soon? I hope so. <laughs> Probably won't be for a while yet, but we definitely, definitely, gonna head back out definitely sure. will be back and for longer because amazing yeah. city. Yeah. It is. And great shopping. <laughs> well, it was so great to have you. Thank you so much. And just want to say good night to everybody. Thank you. We really appreciate it. You guys are rock stars. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Mom. Mommy.